Praise the Lord, everyone, and greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring you greetings from the Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, located at 569 Broadway, right here in Newark, New Jersey, the church in the heart of the community, with the people of the community in its heart. And Lady Spellman and myself come today uh, to salute the great Fishermen of Men Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has prospered some 50 years. And we salute this great edifice, but we give God the glory because it is he who has used his servants, Bishop Clarence Gruber and Mother Nettie Gruber, for, as instruments of building this wonderful congregation as they celebrate 50 years in development. We salute them because they started out in 1970 and they didn't have anything but their home to dedicate. And the church was founded in the home of Bishop and Mother Ruva. And yet we go by the scriptures and we have been encouraged by what we have seen God do through these wonderful people. And we remember Hebrews 6.10 that tells us, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So that this fisherman of men church goes on uh, as not only the legacy of Bishop Gruber and Mother Gruber, but it goes on as the memorial monument, the uh, absolute uh, demonstration of God's blessings, how he will pour it out and he will multiply. Bishop Gruber started out some 50 years ago. Yes, he knew he was going to have obstacles, but he had a goal. He had a vision, and in Philippians 3.13, it tells us, Brethren, I count my, not myself to be apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things of which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Bishop Gruber stepped out on God with a vision of a fisherman of men church, and God has given him what he asks. We salute his memory, but we salute his legacy. Bishop Clarence Groover, Washington preacher, radio preacher, educator, a fundraiser for colleges and universities, IT genius at Howard University, a builder, a carpenter, a scientist, a person who knew financial management, a person who was on the radio for many years. So when you look at uh, 50 years, you look at 50 years and we multiply the days and what have you, but you have to look that little dash that you see between the zero and the two, 1970 to 2020. Oh, you got to go into that dash and you have to see all that went into it, all the sacrifices, all the prayers, all the times when they were challenged, all the times when there weren't enough funds, all the times when the children uh, and others uh, had to sacrifice, all the times that Bishop and Mother Gruber had to sacrifice so that we might have and that God's ministry might have. And so we salute the fishermen of men after 50 years of progress and growth. And Bishop Gruber became uh, the diocese bishop of the Mid-Atlantic Diocese, and so many churches came out 
of his ministry in Maryland and in Northern Virginia and other places. And so when we see this great edifice that sits up in Washington, D.C., oh, we say, okay, congratulations after 50 years. But the impact of a man and a woman of God, the impact of God's work goes beyond 50 years. The impact of the fishermen of men church continues to go on through the members and through the relatives and through the daughter and through the administrators at the fishermen of men church. And so we give God the praise. We give him the glory. And uh, the Lord used Bishop Gruber and Mother Gruber and the Royal Congregation of the Fisher, Fishermen of Men Church. And we congratulate you. We salute you. We honor you. But at the same time, we see that God has used you in a very, very special way. My wife and I uh, were uh, at the convention, international convention at the Shoreham Health Hotel in Washington, D.C. And many people thought I was saved all the time, but I decided uh, one night in 1973, I was going to be baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ and went and was baptized in the home baptismal pool, the built baptismal pool in the home of Bishop and Mother Groover. And my wife came down the very next day and she received the gift of the Holy Ghost before she was even baptized. But she wanted the Lord. She wanted salvation. And so we both had the honor of being baptized in the pool. The Shoreham Hotel would not allow us to use the pools for baptism, but we had a home over at the Fisher of Fishermen of Men Church where we were received. And Bishop Gruber had this elaborate setup right in his home where he had the baptismal. So Lady Spellman would like to give her comments and give her greetings. Praise the Lord, everyone. Give an honor to God and congratulations to the great fishermen of men, Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, for 50 years of growth, development, and a super soul winning record of accomplishments. We cherish the memories and work of Bishop Clarence and Mother Nettie Groover, who continue as our wonderful friends, counselors, and fellow prayer warriors. I want to especially congratulate Mother Groover for we all know God continues to work through you so you can continue being that encouragement to so many souls. You deserve the best for your dedication, uh, devotion, and hard work and sacrifices you've made all down through the years. We salute you, Mother Groover. And I want to say how much my dear mother-in-law appreciated you all down through the years as well. She thought the world of you, Mother Groover. And uh, you know, I know you often uh, mentioned to me whenever we talked at the convention, how much you thought of my mother-in-law. And she was such a great inspiration to me. Uh, Mother Grace Spellman, and to you as well, Mother Groover. God bless you and continue to work for the Lord. For we know God is going to continue to bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. God bless you. We want to acknowledge this life, this legacy, and the works 
of Bishop Clarence Gruber. When we do that, we're also honoring the works and the miracles and the legacy that God has given us through this man. As we said before, 1970, he founded the Fishermen of Men Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in Washington, D.C. 1972, he started uh, the church in his home and built the church uh, and the baptismal pool and had meetings in his church as the congregation grew. He went on the radio for many years and became a very famous radio preacher. People throughout the Washington area would regularly listen to the Fishermen of Men Church of Broadcast. He was a man of community development and he led his congregation. Oh, he led them through this uh, fight that we have against uh, gentrification because people want to take away that which was there and established up there on Georgia Avenue. Now, Bishop Gruber was an IT specialist in technology. He was a quiet man, but he was a brilliant man, and he became a top administrator and director of the IT department at Howard University, Washington, D.C. He was an innovative community leader. Oh, there were many things and drives and civil rights activities that took place through the Fishermen of Men Church. And then he became uh, using his scientific background uh, to study and to implement a program in solar energy, solar energy, saving uh, the church hundreds and thousands of dollars in heating and lighting because he was on the cutting edge. He was on the forward edge. He was financial secretary of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ for over 35 years, and there was never a discrepancy. The books always balanced, and we could depend on Bishop Groover and his ability. And then he served many years as the vice chairman of the board of trustees at the W.L. Bonner College in Columbia, South Carolina. So we have to take into account his teachings and his legacy and our teaching, our scriptures, they go on. And the race isn't always to the most uh, quick or the swift, but to those who endure and keep running. And Bishop Gruber kept running. And one person that says, one of the things that is hard to beat is one who is never willing to give up. And so we praise God for the persistence in the leadership of Bishop Gruber. The fight against gentrification, uh, the attempt to take valuable urban properties for monetary and commercial development. And what they wanted to do is take this valuable piece of urban real estate uh, known as the Fisherman of Men Church and to uh, plop down a certain amount of money so that commercial development could take place. Oh, this is a process by, by which an urban area is changed. Uh, wealthier people, commercial people, uh, typically, they, they replace the inhabitants and the businesses and the churches and the schools or anything in their way. But the devil was beaten back with prayer and commitment. The fishermen of men church organized. The fishermen of men church uh, membership came together, marched to the hearing, uh, went down and met with officials, uh, went out on the street, campaigned on the street. So as you look today, right there, uh, you can see not only the church as it was then, but if you go and look now, you'll see it, a new renovated and upgraded brick-faced edifice. 
And uh, Bishop Gruber told us, if you feel your hands are tied and handcuffed, God has shown the fishermen of men church. He will break the ropes and the chains. And he did it just as you see with your eyes. So a team, God put together teams, husbands and wife teams, congregation and pastor teams. Uh, he puts together young people with older people, the missionaries. He puts educators uh, with the wise and the wisdom of the grandparents and those who take care of children. And God put a team together for his will and his work and his blessed 50 years. So we salute the fishermen of men church. Oh, it hasn't been easy. Like I said, when you look at those, that dash in between 1970 and 2020, you'll see that much happened in that period. There were the happy days. There were the family days. There were the days where there was hardship and there was might not have been as much money for food or to buy a new vehicle or to pay the tuitions, but the sacrifices were made. There were those suffering days, those days with pain. They were those days that were filled with challenge, all kinds of uh, things coming uh, at the church and uh, people trying to take the property so it could be developed from a commercial point of view. There were those spiritually challenging days, oh, when other churches and other groups uh, envied and competed rather than work with us. And then there were those sacrificial days going without so that God's house could be blessed. So we say to you, fishermen of men, congregation, a group of family, and all the suffering that you've gone through, look and see what God has done. We have been taught, and I love this scripture, uh, where waves seem to be coming at us right now. We're in a pandemic in which uh, we have millions of people who have lost their lives, millions of Americans, or over 300,000 uh, Americans have died and contracted this disease. We're up to 17 million. We have people without jobs, people without homes, people about to be uh, evicted. And, and I'm encouraged, uh, as Bishop Gruber and I were taught, I'm encouraged by a scripture found in Job 38, 11. And it looks like those waves are gonna overcome us. Looks like the political situation can be dire. But the scripture says, talking about these waves that come rushing in on us, hitherto shall thou come, but no further. And here shall thy proud waves be stayed. In other words, that wave is only coming so far, and God puts a stop to it. He puts a bank to it. He puts a beach to it and stops those waves that look like they're going to destroy us. But he says, hither shall thou come and no further. And so uh, Bishop Gruber and all the preachers of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, we used to share our uh, problems together. We used to get on the phone, pray together. We used to get on the phone, get each other's advice. But the one thing that remained strong was our faith in God. And uh, you have to learn how never to take your hands off God. You got to take your hands off the situation, put your hands on God, and let God do the carrying. I love uh, when we look at Matthew, and he says, Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But he can... Uh, like take, we have to carry a thousand pounds. You know we can't carry a thousand pounds, but God will take 980 and give you 20. So you know you're carrying something. My burden 
is laid. So you show your faith by turning the problem over to God. A lot of people have trouble. Instead of going and taking it to God, uh, they hold on to it themselves. But you have to be like the woman with the issue of blood. If I could just touch the kin, hem of his garden, and he said, come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your soul. But here's what I said. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, because I will help you carry it. So uh, we remember, and uh, Bishop Gruber tells us, remember him. Remember your pastor. Remember what I taught you. Remember all those hours of Bible class. Remember all those radio broadcasts. Remember all those days that we had uh, in prayer together, how we didn't know where the answer was coming uh, from. But we remember and we taught the scripture, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So, uh, Bishop Groove's legacy, and it's like when someone teaches you something, I don't know if you feel the way I do, but it's like a recorder. And uh, you remember what you were taught. You remember what your mentors took you through. You remember their advice. Many of them have gone on to be with the Lord as Bishop Group has done. But remember this scripture, Luke 20, 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Remember the words I speak unto you while I was yet with you. So here we see Bishop Gruber in, uh, remember, we walked across the street and he showed us those solar panels on top of the church edifice, uh, able to lower the cost of air conditioning, heating, and it was a demonstration model for the whole city of Washington. People came from all over the city just to see what he had done. But he was a leader. He was a scientist. And he was a great uh, person who delved into solar energy. And the fishermen of men, church was blessed. So we're appreciating from whence the Lord brought us. Yeah, you go back to 1970, but now you have to come in to those 50 years and know that there have been some difficult days and we are encouraged uh, that we need to stay together. And as a result of this 50 year struggle to build the Fishermen of Men Church, we are stronger and we are together. We are stronger because we are together. And we will never, never forget that. So we thank you, Bishop and Mother Crew. We thank you for your scientific engineering. We thank you for your carpentry skills, your engineering skills, your commitment to an edifice that is second to none. We compliment you on your community involvement in bringing things together bringing people together, renovating, upgrading, always giving it a lift, always giving it something new. And these are things that we in the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ will never forget. We congratulated you a few years back on your 50th wedding anniversary. But now today we come and we salute the 50th anniversary of the Fisher Men of Men Church. We uh, are hesitant about saying we are proud. We are honored. We are that the Lord has been glorified. We use the word proud. Sometimes you, have, a, a listener will misunderstand that. So we give God the glory. We give him the praise. We give him the salute. That he has used his instruments and uh, his family 
and all those who work uh, at the Fishermen of Men Church these 50 years. And we commend you and the legacy of Bishop Grew as he was vice chairman of the Board of Trustees at the W.L. Bonner College, a time when they needed Bishop Grew for accreditation, for fundraising, and he would have many uh, activities, and banquets, awards, uh, all kinds of things to raise money for this great institution for which he was the vice chair. And today, uh, the W.L. Bonner College goes on. Bishop Bonner has gone on to be with the Lord, and Bishop Group has gone on to be with the Lord, but still fired up are the institutions that these great, and when God establishes something, it remains. So we uh, appreciate that service and dedication and that he gave to the growth of our great school down in Columbia, South Carolina, where we have dormitories and libraries and student facilities and student housing, all because of his work. So Bishop Gruber told us all, as my friend and your friend, as a fellow pastor, help someone up, keep encouraging them, and most of all, hold on when it gets difficult. Oh, we appreciate our administrators who are still actively and moving uh, the Fishermen of Men Church. Oh, uh, Bishop Gruber, our founder, but Mother Nettie is right there, and uh, Sister Judy Gruber is involved with the intricacies of administration, and Sister Alicia Smith is involved with the intricacies of running the institution and running a church that is without spot or wrinkle and runs uh, from a technology point of view uh, like a smooth motor. So you shall know them, we are told, by the fruits. You see all those fruits? We see the fruits of the fishermen of men church. And we say congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. And we never forget that scripture found in Hebrews 6.10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name. 